You're not a lion, Johnny. You're an idiot with a gun and unfortunately a child in your care. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a response to an article that we've received many times from many people. We've had this sent to us and it's kind of a very weird, distressing, gut-wrenching story. Actually, it's about a father who lets his daughter, who's eight, eat or bite into the quivering heart of a deer that she's just shot. So this is what the father, Johnny, posted on Facebook. Hey you hunter chicks, I'm a proud dad. Check out my little pink ninja princess Chloe, eight, with her first deer, a young stag. Shot in a bush block on a friend's farm last weekend. She made tricky downhill shot using my shoulder as a leaning rest and shot with dad's seven millimeter at about 40 meters. Then she took a bite from its warm quivering heart. Go Chloe. Was somebody away at parenting classes 101? I just, honestly, dad, your daughter, is not a little pink ninja princess. You have created a little monster. And I'm saying you, Dad, Johnny, you have created this because this is not a natural behavior of a child. This is something that is learned. We feel really sorry for this child, Chloe. I mean, this is mental and emotional abuse, teaching your child to be a killer. We're really concerned about her mental and emotional well-being. Yeah, you'd wonder how she's going to grow up, what she's going to be like as an adult. Um, what we found really distressing is seeing this image of eight-month-old Chloe strapped to her dad's chest as he's going hunting. So this little baby, I mean, you know how sensitive babies mm. are, you know? Um, they're sensitive to sound, they they soak up everything children do in they're general. They're like sponges. Exactly, but you know, the younger the child is, the more they kind of just draw in everything in their surroundings. Mm. And dad is killing another being with this sensitive baby strapped to his body. I think that's one of the most disgraceful and disturbing things I think we've ever come across. Absolutely. So this is how we're raising the next generation. We're strapping babies to killers. I mean, it doesn't really give us much hope for the no. next generation. In fact, Johnny received quite a lot of uh, backlash on social media, but he said that he wasn't really phased by it. No. He responded by saying, lions do not care of the opinions of sheep. You're not a lion, Johnny. You're an idiot with a gun and unfortunately a child in your care. He also said, she wanted to do it when she saw a picture of her uncle biting the heart of his first deer. Which means she really didn't want to do it because she didn't come up with it on her own. She's merely mimicking what she's been taught and shown. And of course, children love to receive attention and praise from their parents. And they'll often do anything to get it because it's a sign of love. We can all think of examples when a baby or a child repeats a particular behavior because the parents have responded in some way. <laughs> Burger. Bacon. Burger. <laughs> Bacon. So if dad has been encouraging Chloe to kill animals since she was a baby, well, imagine how proud she would make him if she bit into the heart of her first kill too. Again, the child is simply reacting to the hunting environment and mentality she's been raised in. So what we're doing is we're stealing children's compassion away from them. They naturally love animals. They're compassionate towards animals. They don't want to hurt animals. But as adults, we project who we think we are, in this case a hunter, onto our children because that's what we've been taught from our parents and we pass it down to the next generation and so on and so forth. And the violence, the cycle of violence is perpetuated. But we are taking away the natural, beautiful, peaceful instinct of a child and replacing it with violence. Biting into the heart of your first kill is considered by some a hunting tradition. Now we've done some pretty sick things as humans in the name of tradition over the years. Mm -hmm. And tradition is never a justification for immoral actions. And there are so many examples of this around the world and of course Everybody from another culture points fingers at other cultures saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, that's disgusting, how can you do that? But we all kind of participate in these really sick uh, traditions in some way. So a few that get a lot of international attention are the Faroe Islands where they slaughter pilot whales and this is done on a mass scale. I mean, it's just horrific. 
And the worst part of this is that they get kids involved and it's, it's kind of normalised, isn't it? You Absolutely. Know? Yet another example of where children are taught by adults to do horrible, disgusting things in the name of tradition. And then, of course, we have the Yulin Dog Festival in China each year. And this receives an enormous amount of attention from people living in the West because, of course, dogs are our pets. We would never consider eating them. So that's a horrific tradition that we really frown upon. Then there's the Gadamai Festival in Nepal, which is a sacrificial ceremony held every five years. It was estimated that half a million animals were slaughtered in the 2009 festival. This is a centuries-old tradition where the goal is to please Gadamai, the goddess of power, by sacrificing animals. Thankfully, this barbarically cruel festival has been banned due to international outcry, and this is indicative that we do have the ability as a species to come together and stop traditions that are clearly immoral. And on a more kind of subtle level, we all participate in really horrible traditions that involve the death of animals. The so, murder. The murder, that's right. It's not the death. They're not the just murder. dying of old age, remember that. Exactly. So something as simple as, you know, having a Sunday roast. That's tradition for many uh, Western cultures. I remember we always had a Sunday yes. roast growing up. You've got turkey at Thanksgiving. Uh, also turkey at Christmas, that's another tradition. And Lamb on Australia Day. So we're all guilty in some way in, in participating in these traditions that we've been taught. So this entire discussion really epitomises humankind. Not that these are examples of humans being kind, of course. You know, I will rule, dominate, destroy, because I can, with tools and weapons. Because my ancestors did it, and it's tradition. And we teach that mentality to our children. So how will we ever stop the violence in the world and have respect for each other if we can teach kids to do this? And this totally bizarre world that we've created where, ironically, on one side of the world, in Italy, we have a politician try to pass a bill that will potentially put vegan parents who feed their children a plant-based diet in jail because it's child abuse. And then on the other side of the world, in New Zealand, we have a father taking a child hunting and encouraging and promoting her biting into the heart of that dead animal. Is that not child abuse? Should he not be locked away and have his child taken away? You know, which do you think is going to screw up the kid a little bit more? Playing devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. Is biting into the quivering heart really so bad? Is there really any difference between these images? When we teach our children to eat animal products, the end result is still the same. The murder of innocent beings. And in fact, if we're going to talk about numbers and scale, the consumption of meat, dairy and eggs is responsible for the greatest number of animals murdered on our planet. 150 billion animals a year. Now all this story has done is it's brought that reality to the front of our minds because we can see the child putting the heart into her mouth and the blood's coming out. But we're completely disconnected when we take our kids shopping to the supermarket and they pick up a steak. There's no difference between those two things, but the child is not involved in the actual murder of that animal. All right, guys, that's our video for today. Our thoughts on this topic. What do you think? Put your comments down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And remember until next time that going vegan is not the most we can do. It's the absolute least we can do. And we can definitely teach our children about a more compassionate, kinder, peaceful way to live on this planet. See you next video. Bye, guys. So that was a pretty big wow moment. I don't think I've ever touched a cat since then. <laughs> I don't think I'm they've come sure. near me since then. <laughs>